Using your HSA to fund long-term care. Man, uh, this, is fan- this is a fantastic idea that Amara and I didn't even talk about yesterday in our video where we talked about long-term care strategies. Uh, my man Rob had put a comment, a nice elaborate comment on the channel, which I'm going to share with you right now and just read it verbatim because it is spectacular. It's a great idea without question. And I'll actually probably put it as a guest blog post as well on my uh, uh, on my webpage. So let's read what he says. Um, I, we just totally didn't even think about this. So here's a video that Amar and I did Long-term care Q&A with Amar Shaw. And you can see all the, uh, um, the comment, was it, the, the chats up there. And the chats will go as the, the, the screen, as the video goes on. So you'll see the sh- chats. So if you log in, you can watch it and see the chats as well. Anyway, so here's the six activities of ADL, activities of daily living, eating, bathing, dressing, transferring, toileting, and walking and moving around. So if you can't do two of those, then you'll, uh, your long-term care provider will, uh, will, will fund, theoretically, as long as you can validate, you can't do two of those uh, if you have long-term care insurance. And we talked all about it, but, but we didn't talk about it. So here's Rob right here. All right, now I, get, I asked him if I use this. Obviously, Rob's not afraid to say his name, so, uh, so kudos to him. But he, he also said, go ahead and make a video on this. All right. So Rob says, my LTC plan, again, LTC is a long-term care, is far simpler than what you guys are proposing because we were proposing uh, buying a policy, self-insuring, doing life insurance with a long-term care rider, all that stuff, you know, going to a CCRC. But here's what Rob says. First, I start contributing the max of $7,100 a year at the age of 50. Better if you start earlier to his HSA. And continue to contribute seventy one hundred until I stop working at sixty five. So let's just say Rob puts in seventy one hundred dollars a year for fifteen years. So he's making that payment. He has nothing in there now. So zero future of zero present value. Seventy one hundred dollars a month is payment. We're just going to say seven percent a year in interest, and we'll say fifteen years. He'll have one hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars in that HSA. All right, so in 15 years, have 178,000 bucks. He says, I don't know how much long-term care policies cost, but I expect it will rival the amount I'm putting into my HSA each year. I actually, I think it'll be a little bit less, but I think it's a good point. Well, between he and his wife, 50 years old, nah, my policy between Charlotte and me, it doesn't cost anywhere near um, 7,100. But remember that 7,100 isn't a, it's not a sunk cost. If I never use my long-term care, even though it's a little bit cheaper than Rob's, I think we're probably paying you know, on the order of three thousand dollars a year. If I never use my long-term care insurance, right, then that is gone. Whereas Rob is actually using it as an investment and asset. I just, I for some reason, I'm shocked I missed this. This is great. So I don't know how much long-term care policies cost, but I expect it will rival the amount I'm putting to my HSA each year. I pay all my health expenses out of pocket, even the twenty-dollar copays at the doc- doctor's office. And we'll have approximately 212 uh, in my HSA, uh, assuming a 7.2% rate of return. Yeah, so I use 15%. And of course, that's not assuming any growth in there as well. We're not using a, we're, what I'm saying is he's putting $7,100 this year. We're not saying, we're just saying $7,100 flat, but it could be 7200 73 whatnot. Then I stopped funding the HSA retirement and let that sucker grow. At 83, it would grow to $500,000. Now, I, I cannot believe how simple this is and, and just incredibly awesome, which is the amount I plan on to have on hand to fund three years of long-term care. The approach is easy peasy and has several benefits. First, I can access the money in a pinch. Second, there's a significantly likelihood I will not need long-term care. And if both my wife and I don't need it, that 500000 can go to my heirs. Conversely, if you buy insurance and never use it, you lose all the money you've invested. I <laughs> Man, I, I just, I'm stunned how insanely obvious this is, and yet we're making out a mountain out of molehill. Now, there, there is a risk, and I'll share that in a second. Finally, I don't need to hassle with the insurance company over whether I meet their criteria in the terms of daily living. I get to decide when and where I want assistance. Bottom line, if you plan on taking advantage of compounding interest over time, investing 7K is a, a year is the, uh, over the course of your career can easily grow a fund up to a sizable amount. Important thing is that your HSA, you have to save your receipts. My HSA website has a link where you can upload documents in the cloud so you don't need to keep it in a shoebox. 
I have about $10,000 of receipts that I can instruct my HSA to reimburse me at any time in a pinch, and that number will only grow. Even if you don't use your HSA for long-term care, you can use it to fund retirement health care expenses, but that'll mean using it, uh, giving up on self-funding long-term care costs. What that does is, in essence, allows the stock market to pay for all your expenses over your lifetime. Uh, $1,000 expense incurred at age 50 can be fully reimbursed at age 60 if you invested 7.2% annual return because there's no time limit on when you can uh, submit your receipts for a reimbursement. I, and on top of that, I mean, I just, yes. And also it comes out tax free. I just, uh, what a great, what a great, I just, it's, I, I mean, it's insane. It's insane. That is the way to go without question. With, I, it's insane. I, I didn't even think about that until he just said it. So let's just say you're putting $7,100 a year, you get 7% a year and you do it for 20 years. Uh, you'd have, $291,000. So if you start at 45, by the time you're 65, you have $291,000 in your HSA. Tax-free. It's tax deferred going in, tax-free coming out. I just, such a great strategy. Anyway, I'm putting this on a blog post because it's literally the best strategy there is out there for this, without question. Now, the drawback is, all right, Rob, what if you need it in advance? And that stinks. I mean, A, that, that could happen. That's why I have long-term care because if I needed it, uh, today, before I had the, 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 the wonderful of compounding interest and whatnot, I wouldn't have any coverage. So I do have a long-term care policy. But you, you know, that's kind of like buy term and invest the rest. You buy a long-term care policy when you don't need it and then let that sucker drop and then come back around with your HSA at 65. Man, so again, let's say we're putting $3,000 a year into long-term care. Now, that's, that's on the high end, frankly, but just say you are. Two fifty dollars a month for long-term care for you and your spouse you put $250 a month into a, a HSA to grow. Obviously, that won't be quite the, uh, the 7,000 Rob's put in, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? You can put more if you have the cash flow. And then you cover for now, and you're covered for a good amount in the future, too. Pfft. Man, that's just a slam dunk. Good stuff, Rob. I appreciate it. Again, guys, I read a lot of the comments. Uh, I don't have the capacity to, to write back to all of them anymore, but I read a lot of them because there is some stuff in here that's incredibly interesting to me and of value, and this is one of them. So, Keep us doing your suggestions here and watch. We got another guy. You got a, a thing for me. And then you got this guy, D Moon. What HSA plan provider do you use? So, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, people are interested in what you have to say. So, anyway, good stuff. Thanks, Rob. And uh, we'll see you guys.